The objective of this demonstration is to analyze the reduction in drag produced by a change to the geometry. To begin this exercise, click Create Solution and select Fluid Behavior. Leave the fluid material set to Air and allow Discovery Live to create a fluid volume for external flow. Then click Create. Zoom out to get a better view of the enclosure, indicated by the orange outline. Click the right face of the enclosure to specify the inlet and the bottom face as the ground plane. Once we select these two items, Discovery Live begins to generate results. Press H on the keyboard to return to the home view. Now let's pause our simulation to make some adjustments to the boundary conditions. Select the flow velocity and increase the value to 85 meters per second. Right click outlet pressure and select edit. Then select both side faces as well as the top face while holding control on the keyboard. Keep the gauge pressure at zero megapascals and press enter. Reorient the model if necessary. Right click the slip symmetry condition and select edit location. Notice that each of the three faces we just created outlet pressure conditions on also have slip symmetry applied. Let's remove these. Click anywhere in the background to deselect the faces, then rotate the model and apply a slip symmetry condition to the bottom face of the enclosure. Click the check mark to complete the operation. If we take a look at the enclosure, we'll notice that there's quite a bit of additional volume surrounding our geometry. Let's reduce the size of the enclosure to improve the fidelity of the analysis. Right click in the background and select Edit Enclosure. Hold Control and select the two side faces. Then click and drag the mouse to adjust the size of the enclosure. Make sure to leave some room on either side for the airflow. Rotate the model again and adjust the front, top, and rear faces. Click the X in the Pull tool to exit the tool, then go to the structure tree at the top right of the window and clear the checkbox next to Enclosure to hide it. Press H on the keyboard again to return to the home view and increase the fidelity of the simulation. Now start the simulation again. Wait a few moments for the airflow to pass through the enclosure and for the results to stabilize. Now let's create a calculator to report the drag force on the model. Click the calculator button in the solution panel at the left of the window. Give the calculator a name, we'll call it drag, and select the appropriate direction from the list. In this case, it's the X direction. For location type, specify all faces of body and leave display type set to chart, then click select. Click and drag a box around the entire model. Then release the mouse button and click the check mark to complete the operation. Once we do that, the drag calculator will appear. Notice that the results in the calculator are fluctuating a bit. This is to be expected since the airflow within the enclosure is constantly moving. After a few moments, we'll notice that the values in the calculator fluctuate up and down around an approximate average value. If we collapse the graph display using the icon in the top left of the calculator window, we can display the calculator as a single value. This will make it a little bit easier to read the results. We can also create a second calculator to show us the downforce. We'll name it downforce and select the Z direction from the list. Once again, we'll choose all faces of body and leave the display type as chart and then click select. Click and drag a box around the entire model and complete the operation. Let's look at the results with streamlines enabled. Pause the simulation and disable the show results button. Then click streamlines. We can make some adjustments to the streamlines using the flyout menu. Let's reduce the width a little bit and increase the count. At this point, we can start the animation and if we'd like to make further adjustments, we can click the emitter boundary and adjust the shape and size. The drag reduction system, or DRS, is activated by rotating the top wing to allow air to pass through a larger gap. This is done to reduce the drag, thereby increasing the top speed of the car and provide an advantage when passing a competitor's car in front. Let's activate the DRS now 
and examine the values for downforce and drag. To do this, move the mouse cursor to the Groups icon on the right side of the window. Here we'll find a driving dimension that has been predefined to allow us to rotate the top wing by entering a value. Click the zero degree value and enter negative 30 degrees, then press enter. As we can see, the top wing has rotated and there's a much larger gap now between the two wings. If we go back to our side view and right click on the cut plane and select clip with plane, clip, we'll get a much better view of what's happening with the two wings. Notice that both the downforce and the drag have dropped substantially and the airflow is clearly passing through a much larger gap between the two wings. Let's change the result display to pressure and set the display style to inverse surface to examine the pressure contours. Notice that the bottom wing, which remains in its fixed position, still has fairly high pressure on the top face, while the top wing, in the open position, has much lower pressure on the top face. Looking at the underside of both wings, we can see a low pressure area on the underside of the bottom wing, while for the top wing, the pressure values are almost the same. This concludes the demonstration on analyzing the drag reduction produced by a change to the geometry.